Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to lecture four of topic one of unit four magnetic fields. Uh, we're going to be looking at the main ideas of chapter 7.1 and 7.2 of book two. And please complete this reading before class. Here are your learning intention and success criteria for this chapter. Please pause the video and complete the KS table down on the bottom right. Okay, so if we look at the learning intention there, we want students to be able to draw and calculate the magnetic field strength around a current carrying wire. Uh, success should be that you can recall this fact that a moving electric charge creates a magnetic field, that you can calculate the magnitude and direction of a magnetic field around a wire, and draw the magnetic field in 3D situations. Now that recall does indicate some knowledge, but you know, outside of just, you know, do I know this? There's not much you can ask about that. So I've only put three skills here. How do you calculate the field uh, field strength for a wire? How do you determine direction? And then finally, uh, how do you draw that magnetic field? Now, we all know what a magnet is. Uh, it's got an attractive property for some different metals. I uh, you know if the, pool, the poles are the same, they push while opposite ends will pull which is very similar to what we saw with electric charge with positives and negatives. Uh, but uh, the one major difference compared to our study of electrostatics is that magnets don't exist as monopoles that we found yet. And they always exist as a north-south pair. So with any magnet, uh, it is sort of worthwhile considering a magnet as a set of smaller magnets put head to toe. So here's our magnet, and here it is made up of four smaller magnets. Now, in reality, it'd be made up of a lot more smaller magnets than that. And that's going to be important for uh, something in a second. Now, the field lines, okay, remember, have to start at a north pole, and they have to end at a south pole. Okay. Uh, the magnetic field lines, and we can see them drawn here, must go through a material. Now this second convention that I've got here isn't part of the syllabus uh, and moulding doesn't draw it, however it does help us understand why uh, if you break a north salt pole bar magnet in half you don't get a north and a south, you get a new north-south, north-south pair or two pairs of north-souths. And that's because uh, you know, this magnetic field is a property of the material itself. Electrostatics they they're finished at the surface, okay, where the charge is, but magnetism goes through materials. And we also got to do 3D diagrams, which are really troublesome on a 2D page. Uh, and this is because magnetic phenomena often occur at right angles to other physical events like motion or uh, currents or magnetic fields and forces. So when a field enters a page, it is drawn like this. Okay? They crosses, and they can, the, the urban wisdom is it's the back of an arrow, but um, arrows only have three fletchings, not four, so uh, you don't generally see arrows like this. Well, you can do them, but it's not very commonly done. And when it comes out of the page, it's drawn like this. So a cross going in, you're looking at the back of something, and here you're looking at the very tip of it coming at your face. Uh, some texts put circles around the dots and the crosses like Walding does. Uh, I personally don't because I'm lazy, and mine just end up looking like this. Crosses going in, dots coming out. Either will be fine uh, for the exam. When we draw magnetic fields, like we saw with electric fields, the density tells you how strong the field is for a given area. So more field lines means a stronger field. Here we have a weak field, there's only three lines. Same area, we've got six lines, twice as strong. Pretty straightforward. When we're referring to magnetic field strength, we give it the symbol B, and we measure it in the unit Tesla, which has a capital T. And another word that you're going to see a fair amount is this one called magnetic flux, which is just another fancy word for magnetic field. And flux just means something that is moving in or out. There are equations for field strength, but we will see them later on in the unit. Uh, they're not uh, 
important for us right now. So, in the 1820s, Hans Christian Orsted, and I've pronounced that name very incorrectly because it's Danish as I recollect, uh, noticed that when he switched on an electric current, his nearby magnets moved. And he set up a uh, more refined experiment to test this, it kind of looked like this, uh, and he showed that an electrical wire creates a circular magnetic field around it. Now what's important for us to notice here is that this field doesn't have a north and a south pole. But if you look at the uh, diagrams, and this is in your textbook as well if you need a slightly better look at it, uh, it has a direction. Here the direction is going around counterclockwise, here the direction is going around clockwise around the wire. Now the way we remember the direction it goes is by using Ampere's right hand rule. Now we have the thumb pointing in the direction of the current and the curl of your fingers shows you the direction of the magnetic field. So if I put my hand here, let's see, can we see contrast? No, I'll turn on my light. So we should be able to see contrast. So if my thumb is up towards you, my fingers curl this way. So that's the direction the field is going, counterclockwise. If my thumb is down into the screen, now my fingers curl this way, going clockwise. And so that would be the direction of the magnetic field. It would push magnetic things this way. Okay. Try that for yourself. And it's a really important part of learning magnetism because you'll be making those, uh, those pictures a lot with your hands. Uh, it does have some other names that if you're looking on videos, sometimes it's called the right thumb rule, sometimes it's called the right hand curl, uh, but there are probably a few others. Okay. Now, that, let's visualize this. So if we're looking down the wire, kind of like what I did with um, my hand just then, uh, here we have the wire coming up towards you because that's the central dot in the middle and we can see our B, our magnetic field, is going clockwise. Test that out with the, uh, the right hand rule. So do it, put your hand over this thing like this, point the thumb up towards you and then you know, check where your fingers go. And here we have the current going into it and you can see here Walden hasn't put the circle around the X. Uh, so his Y is going into the field and then the magnetic field goes, so into the paper and the magnetic field goes the other way. Uh, but we can also draw these from a side-on point of view. So here we have a wire going up the page okay, and here we can see that the field is coming towards us and here the field is going away from us and when the current is flipped the opposite happens. Let's see how that looks with my thumb. So here thumb goes up the line and here you can see, oops, here you can see that the the fingers are coming up towards you on this side and you can see it's coming up towards you on this side. Thumb up, fingers down okay, and here you can see that the field is going down into the page and here's the opposite. Thumb down the page, fingers go in, thumb down the, this is a really tricky one, uh, thumb down the page, no nope, it's not going to work that way. Uh, let's try this one, there we go. Thumb down the page, fingers up towards you. Okay, uh, and I will admit, teachers all over the world love watching students do this on exam and twisting your arm around. So, definitely worthwhile pausing the video now and just testing that out for yourself, and make sure that you can see how that works because you're going to need it. So, let's get into our first equation. Uh, you don't need to derive this thankfully you just need to recognize situations and use it normally at university you just have a general equation for magnetic fields that we'll see later and you will derive an equation for whatever situation uh, you're going to get given a couple of different equations and you just have to use those so our magnetic field strength b equals mu naught over 2 pi times i over r or you can go mu naught times i over 2 pi times r you might sort of recognize here at the bottom the 2 pi r is coming out of the idea that it's going to be a circle going around um, uh, going around the wire. Uh, B is in Tesla, the current must be in amperes, 
radius must be in meters that's going to be an important one most of these questions are going to deal with centimeters or millimeters so make sure you convert that and mu naught up here is a funny constant because it's a constant with a constant in that it equals 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 uh, tesla per amps meter and you do have to include the pi so if we're using this constant on this formula you might go but there's a pi on the bottom and yet the pi will cancel out so this constant here for this formula just comes down to 2 times 10 to the negative 7 because the pi's will cancel and you're left with 4 over 2 and then a times 10 to the negative 7 there um, this mu naught is called the magnetic permeability constant and in other formulas you would just have the 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 uh, in other formulas the pi cancels as you see here uh, I believe this is mostly to avoid giving you multiple values of k uh, and just giving you the slightly more complicated looking formula and but you only have to recognize that mu naught is only for um, uh, magnetism while epsilon naught in our electrostatics is only for electrostatic stuff okay um, sometimes and Walding does this in his text he does the mu naught over pi 2 pi and turns it into a k uh, but that's not the same k as Coulomb's constant that we saw in the last few videos it is just a terrible part of physics where you have k's everywhere so let's do some examples here is example uh, 7.2a calculate the magnetic field at a point P which is 5 centimeters directly above a wire carrying a current of 20 amperes to the left let's grab out the paper I will redraw that so this is 7.2a where's my light let's bring that a little bit closer Okay, uh, we have a wire that is going leftwards where I equals 20 amps, which is a huge amount of current by the way. And we have some point here P that is a radius of 5 centimeters. Uh, let's go 5 centimeters, which equals 0 0.05 meters. And we're asked to work out what is the field strength yes yes what is the field strength at this point okay so we've just been given a formula let's write these values in um, mu naught oops four times mu naught no, mu naught is equal to four times over two pi uh, times i over r and that equals our magnetic field let's put all those in so that mu naught equals 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 over 2 pi times 20 over 0 0.05 pi's will cancel 2 will cancel 4 over 2 will just cancel down to 2 uh, so then we would have that would equal 40 over 0 0.05 and there's the times 10 to the negative 7 there giving us a final answer of 8 times 10 to the negative 5 Tesla now uh, we have to work out the direction it goes so we're on this side of it the current is flowing this way just double check my video so that I can see yep current is flowing this way so we can see on the top side here it must be going into the page okay going to end up doing this a lot so let's write that uh, 8 times 10 to the 5 uh, inwards so generally if you're working this sort of thing out for a question um, if the exam just says work out the magnitude we just need the number if it says the magnitude and the direction you'd have to do something like 8 times 10 to the negative 5 inwards or into the page um, don't say down because down would imply it's going this way okay coming down here while up would imply it goes up there left right pretty straightforward so make sure you're using phrases like inwards or into or outwards or out of 
All right, so that's a fairly straight one. So this is this is sort of like level one for the um, uh, these sort of questions where you only have to deal with one wire. Uh, let's bring my tablet back over. I'm not going to turn off the light. Looks like we can see it pretty well. Here's 7.2b. Uh, in figure eight, two separate parallel wires are in close proximity. Calculate the value of the magnetic field at a point X between the two wires. Uh, given wire A carries 1.5 amps and wire B carries a current of 2.5 amps. Notice the direction, both currents are going to the right. Okay, so we're going to have to work out the field for both, work out the direction for both. And like we saw with electrostatics, we just add the fields together uh, because they're vectors. And once we know the individuals, they're all going to superimpose and we just add the things together. Uh, we can see this current is stronger and closer, so it's going to contribute quite a lot. While well, this one is weaker and it is further away, so it'll contribute slightly less. Okay, let's redraw this so that it's on my paper. Flip to the other side so we have a working room. We have two parallel wires. Now we are assuming that these things are infinitely long. Remember we saw in our lab dealing with the separation uh, relationship between force and separation distance that when things are very close to each other uh, and the size of your uh, magnets is not very big then the other pole starts to interfere. And so 0.15 meters, 0.10 meters. It was very nice of them to convert it for us. Okay, so I1 equals 1.5, R1 equals 0.15, I2 equals 2.5. R2 equals 0 0.10. Yeah, so as I was saying, um, if these were you know, only a small length, we'd have to worry about the fact that, well, this bit here would push an amount, but this bit here would push a different amount because it is going to create a field and that strength would have some strength over there. We just assume everything is infinitely long, so you don't have to deal with it, okay? We're dealing with the real simple situations. Uh, electromagnetism at university gets a little bit more complicated. So let's work out our first field. B1 is just going to equal uh, mu naught over 2 pi times 1.5 over 0 0.15. Make our substitutions 4 pi over, oops, 4 pi times 7 to negative 7 over 2 pi times 1.5 over 0 0.15 and we'll plug that into the calculator, cancelling where appropriate. It is equal to, there we go, R2 times 10 to the negative 6 Tesla. Uh, we'll come back and do direction in a second. B2, same thing, mu naught over 2 pi, oh I didn't actually substitute up there, let's, uh, let's actually write the proper equation, equals 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 over 2 pi times 2.5 over 0 0.10. Remember, this step doesn't really get you marks on the final exam. This is the step that gets you a mark to show that you can read the question and substitute as appropriate. Uh, so feel free to do this step first, but this is the important thing they're going to be looking for. Uh, solve it all in one go in your calculator if you wish. You can do more things if you wish to, but this is now 3.2 times 10 to the negative 6 uh, Tesla. Now let's think about directions. This one up here, the current is going to the right, it curls around, which means it's coming up, my dots, coming up on this side, then on this side it's going to be going down. So it'll be making 
downwards. So let's write that into. Uh, I'm going to define into in this case as being negative. So it'll be negative 2 times 10 to the negative 6 Tesla. Let's have a look at B2. Again, go into the side, but it's on the top side of it, the upside of it. And you can see it's coming up there. Let's make sure that you can actually see that. Yep, yeah, good. So these will be coming up at that point. Uh, so that means that this is 3.2 times 10 to the negative 6 out of the page. So let's give that a positive, because remember we're dealing with 3.2. We're dealing with uh, vectors in different directions. Uh, since they're different directions, one has to be positive, one has to be negative. So now the total field must equal B1 plus B2, which is negative 2 times 10 to the negative 6 plus... 3.2 times 10 to the negative 6 equals 1.2 times 10 to the negative 6 Tesla. Okay, so after you work it out, you just need to add your fields together. Sorry, I copied the wrong part. This should be a 5. Uh, 5 times 10 to the 6, so let's correct that. 5 times 10 to the 6, uh, negative 2, I got that right. Not sure where 3.2 came from, from the thing, so it should just be equal to 3 times 10 to the 6. And because it's positive, uh, that means it's going to be out of the page. All right. Last example. Oops, my forward. So this one's pretty similar to one we saw before. Two long parallel wires, X and Y. Um, we can see them down here. Position 28.3 centimeters apart and perpendicular to the page, uh, as shown in figure 10. So here they're both coming up towards us. They carry currents of 8 and 6 amps. Uh, there is a point P directly under the wires. 20 centimeters away from each makes a 90 degree angle. So we've got a nice isosceles triangle. Calculate the magnetic field strength, magnitude, and angle. Now the magnitude is going to be the same process. The angle will be the difficult one here because we're going to have to think about what direction these things are going. Before, when we did electrostatics, we had, oh, well, that's here, that's here. So it's either going to pull that way it will push that way and again pull or push but we've just seen that magnetic field strength acts at right angles to things so we're going to have to be careful with our right hand curl rule let's copy this down uh, we have so this is 8 amps and coming towards us this is 6 amps and coming towards us and here is point P and this has 20 centimeters that's just two, 0 0.2 meters and this is 0 0.2 meters uh, we'll call this one they use X and Y, I'm going to use B1 uh, so let's use I1 and I2 so I1 equals 8 amps, I2 equals 6 amps, R1 equals 0 0.2 meters, R2 equals 0 0.2 meters. So let's do the exact same starting thing. Let's work at our magnetic field strength first and then we'll worry about the directions. So B1 will equal, let's just skip to the substitution, 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 over 2 pi times 8 over 0 0.2, which will equal 8 times 10 to the negative 6 Tesla. And B2, okay, 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 over 2 pi times 6 amps divided by 0 0.2 will give us 6 times 10 to the negative 
six Tesla. Now, what about the direction? So we have here, here is our, um, sorry, here's our wire, and here's our wire coming up towards you. Let me just make sure that you can see that. So if we turn that all the way around, we can see that it's going to be curling around. So this field is curling around this way. When it reaches here, and I'll just grab another pen for this. When it reaches here, this field is going to be acting in that direction. Okay, because the push, remember, is going in the direction of the uh, the field. Uh, it is you can think of it as a tangent to any point on this field. So this one will be pushing this direction. So we'll just bring that down here, and we can see it's pushing there. And the same thing here for I two coming up curling around and so at, when it gets to here it's going to be pushing this way okay so I've drawn that a bit too big compared to the other one uh, so it's really important that we don't draw uh, the two that's what I'm looking for uh, the two things the two vectors uh, in the wrong direction uh, but we do know they will have 90 degrees between them. That we can still go, because we know that this is 90 degrees, uh, and so that these two must still be at 90 degrees to each other. So let's draw our resultant vector. B1 we know is slightly longer. So 8 times 10 to the negative 6. And at a 90 degree angle will be here, which is... Um, 6 times 10 to the negative 6 and we want to work out what is this and we want to know uh, what is this going to be here we'll need that angle okay we do know though and I'll just put this in here um, that this has to be 45 degrees because this has to be 45 degrees here. And the reason this has to be 45 degrees here uh, is that these two are at right angles to each other and this bit here is coming down you know, at some whatever we've established. It doesn't actually matter in this case. Uh, however, we're going to establish it as being 45 degrees from the normal which means that this is going to be 45 degrees to the normal. We could have established this as going straight up and rotated all our stuff around, uh, but it's not all that important in this case. Uh, I've probably overdrawn this size, actually. It probably looks more like here, and then something smaller there. Uh, that's why I try to trust my math rather than worrying about my drawing, because I can't draw. Okay, so we have a right-angle triangle. Pythagoras theorem stands out as a nice easy way to deal with this. Um, we know that uh, 8, I'm just going to call this side um, B. Uh, so B squared will equal 8 times 10 to the negative 6 squared plus 6 times 10 to the negative 6 squared. Okay, we've got that in there. Uh, and that means the total would be equal to. Uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 5. Uh, and I go, wait, one smaller than either of these. This is 10 to the negative 5, so this would be 10 times 10 to the negative 6. We've just uh, got rid of the bits. And to work out this angle, uh, we can use opposite over adjacent. So tan of theta will equal 6 times 10 to the negative 6, over 8 times 10 to the negative 6. Math trick, put this in the calculator, they cancel. So Arctan, arctan of um, 6 over 8, which equals about 37 degrees. Okay, So now we have our direction for our, uh, our force it is about 37 degrees, so B equals 1 times 10 to the negative 5 Tesla at east 37 degrees north. Okay. All right, that brings us to the end of this video. Good.
the scene. So, uh, in this video, we have looked at the following. Uh, we've learned what a magnetic field is and how to draw them in 2 and 3D. Uh, that electric current induces a magnetic field. Okay, and remember, that comes because a moving charge creates a magnetic field. And then how to calculate uh, the magnetic field around a single current carrying wire. Uh, and in multiple situations with joules, but remember it's only one wire on its own. We're not dealing with two wires right next to each other uh, creating a field. So uh, for your entrance slip, complete questions 1 to 7 in chapter 7.2, check your learning uh, and put your answers into the 4.1.4 space on eLearn. Thanks for listening guys, have a great night, bye.